I was thinking about this the other day <coughs> where I was like, you know how people always um, are like, you know, white people have no business rapping. Yeah. What if you went back in time and taught the whitest culture how to rap? Like you taught them black culture before it became cool. Before it became black culture. Like go to Holland and teach like those little like cl- like wooden clog people like all about hip hop. <laughs> you teach them like Wu Tang lyrics. <laughs> Wu Tang killer. <laughs> and the background's your the clogs and shit. So like in the future now it's the it's it's um it's the African American community that's like biting. They're like oh nah you're. You're you're uh, you're the culture vultures now. <laughs> How fucked up would that be? I feel like that's the plan of like a racist. Of like, if I can go back in time and make the whites the cool people, then we control the culture. I mean, what would they what what would they have to do? What would they have to do to make them not assholes? Stop slavery. Become the slaves. Become the slaves. <laughs> Just go to Africa. You want to buy me? You oppressed me. <laughs> you just got here. <laughs> uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Night Funk. Starting off strong. Um, for this episode, we're going to be talking about rich assholes. Yeah. And uh, the shit that rich people will buy. And also, we're going to throw in some of Spotify's rap stats. Yeah. Because this year, we've listened to a lot of music worldwide. A lot of things went trending. And a lot of things were created for whatever reason. Some of... I was looking at some of the playlists that were created mm-hmm. uh, this year, and some of them are really weird. Bro, I love some of them. My favorite one is uh, uh, Stepdad Rock. Uh, oh, you mean Divorced Dad Rock? No, they're Stepdad Rock, too. Well, well yeah, I think, that, I think they're, um, they're... There's Divorced Dad, Stepdad Rock, uh, Abusive Dad Rock. <laughs> Abusive Dad yeah. Rock. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Disturbed and all this shit. <laughs> yeah. I think that also like uh, goes with Divorced Dad and Stepdad Rock. Yeah. A lot of them correlate. I think all of them have Creed. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird. Why would, like, Abusive Dad have Creed? Uh, I don't know. They like to get It is fucking... a Christian band. Yeah. It's so weird that, to me, like, Creed is Christian. Like, the guy doesn't seem Christian. He's over there, like, thrusting his hips to sing in the God. Yeah. I was like, listening to Creed. I can't the believe that the Creed performed at the Super Bowl. When? A long time ago, dude. Oh, okay. I thought you meant like recently. No, like, no, no, what? not recently. But no, they did perform at the fucking Super Bowl. Although I won't be surprised if they do perform so- sooner or later. You know what? Should we do the fucking Spotify rap stats at the top of the Let's show? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, because there's some stuff that I really do want to show. Okay. So, uh, by the way, we're going to be uh, interviewing Creed uh, at the Creed tour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, top global artists for spotify these ones were all the obvious all your generic mm-hmm. ass like artists that everybody like hypes up for no reason number one as always taylor swift taylor Ooh. swift has been like the biggest fucking artist this year it's insane how popular popular she is and i don't know a single song yeah. <laughs> i don't know, I know a, a single thing song- i was like i knew some of her older songs and then the uh the one song that uh that i know a lot is uh shake it off Mm-hmm. Because they're in Houston, we would go to a sushi place. It was one of the sushi revolving places. Yeah, and they always play that song. It was like every other song was "Shake It Off" by Taylor <laughs> Swift. So now, when I hear "Shake It Off" by Taylor Swift, I crave fucking sushi, dude. What they did that whole like lab mouse thing where they like train you. Oh, yeah, they did that to me. <laughs> so then you're always like, I could fucking kill some sushi Bro, right now. I would go to that sushi place like two or three times a week sometimes. Okay, going down the list. So number two, Bad Bunny. Three, yeah. The Weeknd. Four, Drake. Five, uh, Bessel Pluma, which is surprising because he number only five? he only blew up this year. Like this this past year, he got up there in fame. So I have been listening to a couple of his songs. He's not bad. He's a pretty good artist. Yeah. Um, I don't know who, who this is. Six, uh, Feid, F-E-I-D. F E I D sex five six five. It's F E I D feed feed a feed feed. I don't have no idea who that is. I don't either. Is that a rapper or a singer? I don't, I don't know. know. Seven Travis Scott eight SZA. Uh, I like SZA. SZA is cool. Uh, G uh, Carol G or nine is Carol G. I don't know. I said that backwards. My dyslexia kicked in right there. <laughs> Uh, G Carol. <laughs> Carol G really blew up also in Who's the Carol past G? couple of years. Uh, she's like a like a like a Latina singer. Oh, like okay. like she does like a mix of hip hop and pop, something like that. And then ten Lana Del Rey. I like Lana Del Rey. She's okay. Yeah, I've heard of like two of these people. Yeah. And then top ten songs globally. Number one, Flowers by Miley Cyrus was like the number one stream song 
uh, uh, this year. Yeah. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, Kill Bill by SZA, uh, As It Was by Harry Styles, Seven fe- featuring Lotto by Young Cook. Young Cook? Young Cook. Let's see. Ella ba- Baila Sola with Peso Pluma and es- Eslabon Armando. Oh, that's that one song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cruel yeah. Summer by Taylor Swift, Creepin' by Metro Blooming, The Weeknd, 21 Savage, Calm Down with Rema and Selena Gomez, Shakira. Briz, Shakira? Yeah, Shakira's BZRP Music Sessions Volume 53. Oh, that's that fucking like, YouTube-esque song that she did. There's like a YouTube t- uh, channel where this guy who's like a... Um, he does like a bunch of um, what's it called? A studio recordings, or yeah. he's a he's a music producer, and he invites different artists. He gives them like a random fucking like 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 track, yeah. and then they just perform over it. And um, all right, well, and then I'm, there's also albums. I'm not gonna go into that. The number one album was fucking Bad Bunny. Then followed by Taylor Swift, SZA, The Weeknd, Carol G. Yeah, I all still the same. See a Bad Bunny. It's just because a lot of spicks like him. Anyways, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> top podcast globally. Number one, the Night Funk Podcast. What's hey! up, everybody? Nah. <laughs> we showed up. Take that, Joe. <laughs> we didn't copy you. Fuck you, Isimo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, you've said that for three shows in a row. You need to stop. <laughs> we didn't do anything. I know. I want to get called out by them just uh, to do it. You're going to be like, uh, <laughs> these guys have been calling us out for a minute, and we don't like it. And you don't We're going to go cry about it? The best Mexican food is a carnitas burrito, and I can prove it. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bud. Okay, so the top five podcasts: uh, number one, Joe Rogan; two, Call Her Daddy; three, Huberman Lab; four, Anything Goes with Emma Chamberlain, which I which is that one. It's that one chick that's like very dry humor. I don't know. She like recent this year she blew up. Yeah, I don't know. Who she and is. then five is On Purpose with Jay Sheedy Shed Sheddy Sheedy. Cheating, I guess. I was looking at the top twenty-five, and uh, last podcast didn't make it to the top twenty-five this year. I think they're in the top fifty. Yeah, know? I mean and they probably lost a little bit from the, all that shit that happened. Yeah, well, yeah. number six is Crime Junkie, and that's Crime always Junkie. been up there. I've I never Crime listened. Junkie was pretty good though. I never listened to Crime Junkie. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. Try them out. The only ones on here that I do listen to is this past weekend with Theo Vaughn is number seven. Uh, I like that. Yeah, and then let's see, Lex Friedman podcast is fifteen. Um, and then the only other one, I guess, conspiracy theories is number 25, 24, the Jordan B. Peterson show, which, you know, a lot of cucks like to listen to him. Anyway, moving on. Or where's, uh, where's the good old, uh, what's the space? Shapiro. Shapiro? Yeah, where's he at on the ranking? Uh, he's not on the rank. He's, he's on not. the top 25. Where's his sister? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if she just had a podcast where it's just her, just, you hear her feet shuffling. It's like number one podcast. <laughs> okay, so here's some fucking stat breakdown. Okay, yeah, listen, uh, for listen. some reason they're not showing January. It just starts at February for some reason. But anyways, the big game and Valentine's Day uh, prompted huge increases in listening around uh, moments that fans couldn't help but to love. So, following her halftime performance at the big game, streams of Rihanna's music spiked more than six hundred and forty percent on Spotify across the USA. Uh, Bitch Better Have My Money saw a 2,600% increase uh, and then a 1,000% increase or at least a little over a 1,000% uh, increase on Diamonds, Rude Boy, and We Found Love. This year, listeners created over 200,000 breakup playlists, which were streamed the most on Valentine's Day. How many uh, suicide playlists? Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, the all-time tracks uh, added to breakup playlists on Spotify were uh, We Are Never Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift. Oh my God. Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Hell Clarkson. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Since uh, You've Been Gone. And uh, Someone Like You by Adele. That's a great song. Yeah, it is. That's a good song. I like, I like the Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. And what was the other one? The one before that? Um, that would be uh, Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. No, after that. After that? You said, what, Carrie Underwood? Uh, be- oh, um, Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. Yeah, that's that one, uh, 
Then I uh, dug my keys into the side of the pretty little Chevrolet four wheel drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that song. Fucking yeah. Amigo the Devil does a cover of that, dude. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. I had to take a sip of my drink. Okay, moving a sip on to Mar- your Coca Cola Zero Sugar. Okay, moving on. To, <laughs> <laughs> moving on to March, the coastal cowgirl aesthetic took over this spring with with a nearly two hundred two thousand percent increase in user generated coastal cowgirl playlist on Spotify. They can just say white girl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, a, let's see. Leon Bridges, the Chicks, Casey Musgraves, Glenn. Uh, Campwood and Fleetwood Mac Dreams. So white girls. Yeah, a bunch of white girl stuff. And then following, uh, also in the month of March, following the season four premiere of HBO Secession, the U.S. streams of Secession's main title theme uh, spiked over 350%. Jesus. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, and then uh, some of the top songs that were on those playlists were from Frank Ocean, uh, The Strokes, Credence Clearwater Revival. It looks like a, it's a bunch of different songs that were used on the show. Yeah. Moving into May, this is the one that I was like fucking like. This is insane. As the pickleball craze uh, picked up okay, around pickleball. the world, daily searches for pickleball related playlists increased a thousand six hundred percent in May, uh, twenty twenty three <coughs> alone. Why? Like what is what is the pickleball playlist? Like what songs are on? <laughs> it doesn't say, but I do kind of want to look yeah. one up. And then uh, following the premiere of the Disney's The Little Mermaid, streams of the film's soundtrack saw nearly a three hundred and twenty percent spike in daily average uh, streams on Spotify across the world. Moving into July, music was a key ingredient in this summer's Tomato Girl summer trend. Who's making up these fucking yeah, trends? The fuck? I've never heard of this trend. No, July was the fucking submarine, wasn't it? See, red cherry tomatoes and hot pink uh, playlist color, a summer full of girl power. This must have been because of the Barbie movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Creation of Tomato Girl playlist. Um, following the premiere of the Barbie movie, global streams for Spotify's Barbie official playlist increased by nearly 1,560%. Moving into October in sub, uh, or oh, October, you missed a few months there, bud. Oh, uh, they fucked up this website because this is October, and then it tells me stats for September. Oh, uh, okay. Well, in September, we saw a five hundred and eighty percent increase in searches related to Roman Empire. <laughs> I never got the whole thing. Like, what? What is it? It's just like, what's your Roman Empire? What is the one thing you always? talk about no well the original thing was how often do men think about the roman empire but i and don't it, get it like that's the thing well, apparently uh, men do think about the roman empire a lot why because of the structure of power it's always like how like the roman empire was like one of the biggest like things that ever happened in like human history and it collapsed on itself and for some reason men are obsessed with the idea of ruling and conquering and then losing it all it sounds like a bunch of like Alpha bro shit. I don't know because I, I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think about the uh, the Roman Empire. I do think about empires though, like the Aztec empires, the Mayan empires. I think I've thought about the Roman, the Greek empires, uh, the 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 uh, the imperialism in Jap- uh, Japanese, and then also Chinese imperialism. All that shit is interesting. It's really cool. Oh, yeah, it's interesting, but it's not something where it's like I'm. You're constantly thinking about it, really. I think it's more of the idea of, like, men do think about shit like that more often than women do. Yeah, because it's more epic stuff. I think men are very more—I think men are a lot more interested in history than women are. I think that's just a common thing. It makes me think of that Shane Gillis uh, (laughs) joke where he's just like, as soon as you start, like, getting into history, you're basically—that's basically, like, early-onset Republican. Like, (laughs) yeah. 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 He's like, he's like, you're just working. It's like— See, that's why I think when people are like, how how often do you think about— the Roman Empire is like it sounds like something you're trying to do like oh so you're a Republican is like what I don't know I, I could see that being like used as a trap I don't I know women like history dude they always bring old shit up <laughs> <laughs> that is true let's see listeners made over uh, 10,000 girl dinner playlists on Spotify this year <laughs> girl dinner you've never seen that fucking no, uh, I haven't. it's basically like girls eating Whatever they can find laying around the house in order to like have a meal, like it's like 
Oh, all I could find today to eat was some leftover Juicy Juice Cheez-Its and a fucking, like, um, a bowl of ice cream. Just go to fucking therapy. That's depression. <laughs> that's the whole the, well, That's the whole thing about girl dinners. Like, they're willing to just eat what they have to get by. Like, uh, like this one girl had made a post. She's like, I didn't have much to eat yesterday, so I just ate a whole jar of mar- uh, a maraschino cherries. And then it just cuts off, girl dinner. The fucking little... Bro, if, if we had, like, self, this technology back in the day, we'd be famous. <laughs> what like, what did you eat last night? Oh, I had powdered milk. Girl dinner. <laughs> <laughs> without, the, without the water? Yeah, just wet it with my saliva and just held it in my mouth until it became fucking milk. <laughs> what do you mix with powdered water? <laughs> <laughs> Is that really a thing? Mm-mm. Okay, I was about to say. You can't powder water. I know. I'm just saying. Like you never fucking know, <laughs> that dude. Would be never... funny. <laughs> what do you do? You just shake it really fast and it turns in the water. That would actually okay. So that would be um, pretty cool. The Afro beats genre was everywhere in 2023. It's called hip hop. Uh, uh, since fucking racist. <laughs> it's no, that is. I know it's a real thing. <laughs> it's a different. Since 2017, Afro beats has grown over uh, 550% streams worldwide. Um, the top artists added to Afro Beats were Rema, Burna Boy, and I don't, uh, oh, Lib- Burna Boy. Lib- Libica, Libica? yeah. This year, fans created uh 22.5 million plus blends on Spotify, which I think it's just like you blend it with another person, yeah. yeah. And then the rest is just fucking your typical stats for like most streamed artists. Most stream songs, albums, podcasts, and yeah, that's it. So nice. I just I thought some of them were really interesting. I just thought it would be worth talking about. People have really like I do think about that sometimes where after you watch something, you can't help but to look into certain things about it. I know for me, for a lot of shows, I, like me and my wife watch a lot of like um uh animation. Mm-hmm. Like today we're watching um I we just finished up the second season of The Legend of Vox Machina. It's the oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the critical role animated yeah. show. It's really good, but there's a lot of guests that show up, and luckily through Amazon Prime, if you click up, it gives you like all the IMDb yeah. uh, people. It tells you who's playing right now, who's on, screen. which is awesome. Yeah. And sometimes you find out it's like, oh, I uh, this fucking person like they had people from like Lord of the Rings show up. Mm-hmm. They had people from different like uh, the Fonz was in one of an episode. I thought that was fucking funny, and then um. Obviously, yeah, Matthew Mercer is like fucking sprinkled in in different episodes. Mm-hmm. Which I think it's fucking great too. But yeah, um, that guy's great. He's good at like on his feet thinking like things. He he's a really really yeah. good like improviser when it comes to his like D and D shit. Yeah, I've been getting more and more into D and D because I've been playing Baldur's Gate. Are you playing um, it? Yeah, I'm playing Baldur's Gate three nice. right now. I'm obsessed with it. The game is so fucking fun. The shit that you can do. Mm-hmm. It's funny because, like, there's so many decisions that you have to make, and then sometimes you have to, like, subside from it because just because of your shitty roles. Um, I had, like, a situation where I had no choice but to murder children <laughs> in order to get out of that situation. Nice. Yeah. And uh, luckily, I didn't feel as guilty because I... <laughs> Because I closed I, my eyes really tight. No, because they're technically <laughs> goblin children, and they uh, that isn't frowned upon apparently. And we know goblins aren't people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> apparently not. In Baldur's Gate, they, they don't give a shit. Oh god. Because um, if I didn't kill them, then the jig would have been up. Even though <laughs> technically, even after I killed them to make sure they wouldn't make noise, I still got caught because my sneak <laughs> roll. Just fucking killed for yeah, nothing. Yeah, my sneak roll <laughs> failed, so I basically ended up just killing two innocent kids. Yeah. No, we play a D and D with uh, uh, a couple friends. All, they're all over the place. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm a half orc uh, bard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm also like have a background as in thievery, mm-hmm. so I'm really good at stealing shit, and I'm really good at persuading you that I didn't steal anything. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I'm like, ah, come on, come on, and yeah. I fucked a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, because I'm a bard and I made him a whore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my my character that I made on Baldur's Gate, he's um he's a human sorcerer that specializes in uh sly of hand and he's proficient also <laughs> in um persuasion pers- uh, persuading and um uh what's the other one? Uh, persuading and it's like another form of it's not intimidation, it's the other one. Um charisma. Uh yeah yeah but basically he's good at all the charisma stats yeah 
And uh, it's funny how easy the game becomes whenever you can just talk your way out of everything. Because a lot of times there's moments where like, oh, yeah, this can be a really epic fight. But I just don't end up fighting at all because I just get really good rolls and stats. <laughs> Mine, I have a... Um because uh, my since my charisma is high and I have a bunch of other little feats that uh, I add points to other things. If I can charm someone, like uh, my persuasion is plus ten, uh -huh. so everything I roll plus ten more. Okay. So there's no way I could fucking fail unless I get like a one. Yeah. And then <coughs> if that doesn't work, if being nice doesn't work, my intimidation is plus eight. Oh. Okay. So I can just intimidate him because I'm a half orc, so I have like. This intimidation thing, mm -hmm. and I can just be like, "Oh, I'll fucking kill you if you don't do this for me." Yeah. Um, and also, I'm really strong because I'm a half orc. Mm. So, if my little magic stuff doesn't work, I could just beat the fuck out of something. <laughs> yeah. So I have I have like a crossbow and a sword, and my sword is also a magical sword. Mm -hmm. It does nothing for me. It's just a regular sword. Yeah. But every day I can roll uh, a six sided die three times, mm -hmm. and that many rubber ducks appear. Oh. Only I can see them move. <laughs> what <laughs> yeah so they'll do things but if someone else is looking at them they're not moving okay and only i can see them they they're real to me but to everyone else they're just that oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> okay yeah there's like 20 scattered throughout the world there's like 15 on a pirate ship right now and they're helping the the pirate ship like go around everywhere <laughs> okay yeah. cuz no one can see them <laughs> How long have you been on this campaign? <laughs> Not long. It's been a bit. Okay. Because yeah. I remember well, you said it's been like a year. You you guys you guys have been on a, a in a D and D group for a minute, right? Yeah, it's a, like a year, year and a half now. How often do you guys meet up? We uh when everyone still lived around here, um, people live up like uh up like towards Atlanta or mm. uh, close to us. Um, it would be like once every other weekend. Yeah. Uh, but now it's like maybe once or twice a month if that. Okay. Yeah, because everyone like some someone moved over to Alabama. Some more people just it's just, they were the person that moved to Alabama was our central point where we would go play. Okay. So now we don't have that. So it's either they come all the way to Gainesville, or we go all the way to like Atlanta. Damn. And we're like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> it's no. too far. Y'all can't just do fucking like. No, we do. Uh, we do Discord. Okay. Yeah. But it's uh it's hard to do Discord when everyone's trying to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's cool because then we can put up maps and shit and we can mm. all look at it. Yeah. Um, Hannah and I just did a little one-off with our uh, Dungeon Master. Mm -hmm. uh, we played Dance Dance Revolution. Oh. Yeah, because we got <laughs> we got teleported away and ended up on top of a plateau. And time kept moving forward, but only if we danced really good. I had no problem. <laughs> My wife's character is a monk, and all she does is fight. Uh -oh. So she was rolling like shit on the dancing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> moving on. Took a long detour there on fucking D and D. Well, we can go back to rich people. Uh, yeah. I want to see. I want to. I think they recorded it or have a podcast about it. But uh, what's his face? Uh, what's that one actor guy that has a like an actors D and D group? Oh, that would be fucking, uh, it's like Joe Miggle something. He's the one that's like married to fucking, um, yeah. uh, was it Sophie Vergara or something Ma like that? Joe Maggiano or whatever. Yeah, Joe Maggiano. Something like that. Yeah. But he has, Joe like, Macchiato's. Fucking, fucking, uh, like, I think, uh, what's his face? Owen Wilson plays with him. Uh, it's a whole list of people that play with yeah, him. Yeah, they have like, like a A list actors. They have like a crazy, like, like so, like big celebrity yeah. D and D group, and then since he has all this money, he built like a massive like, like playing area in mm -hmm. his basement. I'm like, that. I mean, I wish I had that kind of fucking money. Just build whatever the fuck I want. I saw recently they were going after his wife, the Sophie Vergara girl. Why? Because um, she's gonna star in like another show that's based on some fucking like Colombian drug lord, and people have been like online basically being like, can we like stop making these because yeah. these are getting annoying and they're getting boring and they're also like can can latin characters play something other than a fucking a drug, front, lord. Like a drug lord because yeah. it's getting like fucking annoying and she kind of like went out and be like it was just kind of like no like we we did a lot of hard work on this like trust me you guys will like the show and then people are like we know what we want and we don't want this yeah this is like it but, but to be honest it's gotten old it has gotten yeah. old 
Like after Narcos and Narcos Mexico and then all these other fucking narco esque mm-hmm. like movies and shows and stuff like that, like it gets kind of boring after a while. Yeah. Like come up with something new. Like I feel like you need to have it in steps, you know, like or in, like you need to divide it up by years. Like one yeah. year you need a good ass fantasy show, the next year a good ass sci fi show. Like, I liked it when Marvel was like, um, because now there's like a like three fucking Marvel movies every year. Yeah. It used to be like, oh, there's uh, the next Marvel movie will come out in two years. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, fuck yeah. You got something to look forward to. And then they take their time and actually make it good. Yeah, I think um, these yeah. past couple of years, we've been getting like a new Marvel movie every like three to four months. But yeah. this year, we've gotten less because of the giant boy uh, boycott. Yeah, the, the, the strike. The strike, yeah. 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 yeah, and because of that, everything got pushed back, yeah. which I was actually a little pissed off about, about because they pushed back Blade. We were supposed yeah. to get Blade at the end of this year, and I was, I've was i been waiting for that forever. I don't give a fuck about anything that's Marvel-related for the most part anymore because, like, after after the whole Infinity War things, I'm like, I'm done. Like, there's not much more. Like, I might watch, like, a fucking Marvel show from time to time if my wife is yeah. watching it, but I just don't care anymore because, like... Like it's it's it it's been concluded. It's kind of like you know they just recently this year finally finished the Attack on Titan series. It took ten years to get there. Oh really? After ten years, it's done. There's not going to be any more. And if they do make more, fuck you, because that's why shows people get burnt out of shows. That's why people are sick well, and tired of like Dragon Ball Z and Bleach and Naruto. Like just you, some things need to end. Well, I mean the Marvel thing. It's not going to end because they have so many storylines that interconnect and go together because like you know the that's Infinity why I saw war I, and then there's secret wars uh yeah. the the scroll invasion uh well they tried working that shit into some of the actual shows and mm-hmm. it hasn't exactly benefited apparently that secret invasion show is pretty fucking bad and i've i watched a couple of episodes with my wife she didn't finish it because she just kind of got bored of it really i heard it was not bad. Secret Invasion? I yeah. heard it. Was, I heard the opposite. I heard people saying like they, people, watch it. people were really mad about the intro. There were people really mad about the <laughs> just just some white guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It was Kevin Feige just saying every slur. <laughs> no, people were mad about the intro because of um, the whole thing is uh, AI generated. Oh yeah, that's the why. Okay. Yeah. And then also they. Uh, there's a giant reveal at the end of the season that everybody was just like, "That's bullshit." They they, they shouldn't have fucking put that in there. Like that. Like, what was the reveal? Huh? What was the reveal? Uh, that War Machine's character was a scroll this whole time. That wasn't at the very end. That's what they said. No, it happened like midway through. Oh, midway through. Well, I don't know. Yeah, That's how it's, much I- it's Rhodey. I, I know it because I saw like the little screenshots of it and like read the thing. But Rhodey like apparently wakes up and he's been like. Pretty much like in a hibernated sleep, because mm-hmm. uh, the scrolls kept them on it. I think they, um, I think they like fix his back. Yeah, because you know he like fucked up his back and he had to wear like the braces. Mm, he wore like the robotic like, yeah. legs. And then like the first thing or like something happened and he started asking around for people that are gone. Like you know Iron Man's gone. Uh, he didn't know about like the blip when like five five years of mm-hmm. like half the population was gone. It was just like it was. He became a scroll after, what was it? I think it was a civil war. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a minute. And, uh, (sighs) but it's like, no, I don't like it. Shut up. Like, stop. Like, you don't have to like it. I know, but it's like, I feel like I'm not the only one that didn't like it. I feel like a lot of people I mean, were kind of there's like, there's some, something, yeah, like I'll watch, like I'll watch the, um, the Miss Marvel, mm-hmm. and I don't like, I don't like what they did with her power. Like, she's supposed to have like super stretchy, like powers. She's supposed to be able to like throw her vagina at people and stuff. Okay. <laughs> no, but she can make like her hand. Hit it with the suit. lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she's like, you know, can make her hands like super massive and yeah. she's strong. There's like something that she's like, she has su- kind of super strength, but the bigger like her hands get, the stronger they are, or some shit like that. I yeah. Don't know. Um, but they made it in, like to with, like an energy based thing from the bangle, mm. which is like okay. So if she doesn't have the bangle, she has no powers. So she's not special. Like you could take away Captain America's shield and the costume, but he's still a fucking super soldier. I don't know why they yeah. they. I don't know why they pick Brie Larson as Miss Marvel. She's terrible. I hate Brie Larson. She's very deadpan. 
I know, but it's yeah. like I don't like it. Like get somebody more, get somebody better. Last night uh, I watched Pearl. Good movie. Oh, I need to watch that one. I need to watch that one X, and they're coming out with another one that connects yeah. together with them. Yeah. yeah. Do you know the connection between Pearl and X? No. Oh, okay. Don't tell me because I'm gonna watch them. Oh well, I mean it's not that big of a deal. Okay. Okay. It's just the characters are seen again, basically. Yeah. But anyways, um. What the fuck were we going to talk about this episode? We are talking about rich people buying stupid <laughs> shit. That's we, what we went were on a 30-minute tangent. We are talking about Joe DiMaggio buying, like, a whole basement for his D&D fucking nerds. And why don't you buy a cage for that spig wife? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, but if Sofia Vergara ever came to me, she's like, I want you. I'll be like, yes. <laughs> huh? Sofia Vergara. She is very attractive. Yeah. Even if she does have, like, very rubber face looking Now she features. does, but just cover it up. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm Paper always, bag it. I like I like a natural like look. I, I, this, I, oh, like what's her face? Uh, what? What's her name? Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Oh, I was gonna I was gonna say current day Alicia Keys. I like the. Ooh, I, I like Alicia how she. Keys, yeah. I love how she looks Ooh, without yeah. makeup. Um, you know what? I kind of sound like, like sexist men. I kind of sexist like. I kind of do like uh, uh, Mia Goth's like look. Oh, from yeah, from from Pearl. Yeah, yeah. Like I like her. Like like she barely. She has like no eyebrows. Yeah, they're like super blonde. So yeah, you can't see but them. she's got. A, she does have like a pretty face. Yeah. Yo, the dude, the ending of Pearl, <laughs> it's so fuck. You you'll love it. Okay. You'll love it. All right. Well, I found this web uh, this Twitter account because uh, I just looked up like what are stupid things that rich people have bought, and it brought me to a Twitter account. You can look it up. It's stupid stuff rich people buy. Uh, at stupid rich stuff. Um, we'll start with the first one. Uh, and I told you this before the show. Twelve thousand dollars, you can get the world's largest Scrabble game. Look at that thing. That's the world's largest. Apparently, I would, I would imagine it'd be bigger. Yeah. What do you think? But like, that's just inconvenient if you're short. Yeah. Yeah. And it's twelve thousand dollars. You can make that. Twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars for that piece of shit. You could easily make that for like a yeah. fraction of the price. It wouldn't even be that hard. Yeah, uh, three hundred and forty-five thousand dollars for a celebrity robotic avatar. So it's just a robot that I guess mimics celebrities. So you could just have a robot going around like Robert De Niro or some shit like that. It doesn't even, but it's not gonna. It's no, not it doesn't look, look like them. It's just gonna sound like them a little. Oh my god! Yeah. The thing looks like a fucking serpent. Yeah, it does. It looks like a snake ready to fucking kill you. Look at those claws on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I oh, showed you this one. Yeah, ninety thousand dollars to kill a whale submarine. I, I mean, that thing looks fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the picture. Uh, uh, it's you can see a guy inside and someone else behind him waving inside the head of a killer whale submarine. How? But okay, no, not how. Why? Why would you? <laughs> need it because it's cool i guess yeah. like uh, i mean 80 percent of people in a poll said it was worth the buy i feel like it's got to be a meme dog yeah. it's got to be a, they're they're probably just like me they're they're trying to justify the dumbest purchase they've ever made they're I like mean, oh no it was totally worth it but when did you fucking like it's like, like whenever like, a person buys a green egg they're like yeah this fucking thing is the best fucking thing i've ever bought like yeah. a, a green egg fucking pressure cooker like fuck you yeah. nobody gives a fuck that you got a green egg yeah. But I mean, Get wouldn't that be cool grill. if you like, if you live like at a lake, and you just like, I got a, <laughs> I got a submarine in the back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna go into Lake Lanier with that fucking thing. You'll so hit I, every dead body. <laughs> <laughs> every fucking de old buildings get fucking uh, haunted by like slave ghosts. Uh, I think this one's well worth it. Fifty four thousand dollars for a self contained hoot nanny. <laughs> Wait, is that one of those little like? It's like one of those machines that do that. Bing, 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 ding, 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 ding. It's the fucking music machines. Look at that shit. If I can click it, look at that. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm gonna save it that way you can. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the who and Annie. Thirty six hundred dollars for some Louis Vuitton dumbbells. Those are like five pounders. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> little Louis Vuittons. Uh, what? Is, oh, this one's fucking cool, actually. $60,000, it's a flying, fire-breathing dragon, remote-controlled. It's powered on propane. <sighs> okay, but but what, but what? like it walks around like a dragon? Or? No, you remote-control it and it flies around. 
<laughs> How much does this thing cost? This thing is sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> I yeah, can just that, light the tail of a kite on fire. It does the same thing. <laughs> it just seems very dangerous. Of like, you you you'd obviously obviously need to have a lot of private land for this thing. Yeah, it was like the imagine running it? that thing in a subdivision, just like. <laughs> There was the neighbor in his fucking. Oh, I'm sorry. Dragon. I thought this was America. <laughs> <laughs> Just burn someone's house down. Well, it was like what Elon Musk sold the fucking flamethrowers. Yeah. Yeah. From like his boring company. Yeah. Thing. I, I, I never understood why he did that. But then uh, again, he he's done a lot of things that not a lot of people don't understand. He did the flamethrowers to fund his uh, tunnel because mm-hmm. he has that massive fucking tunnel he's he's digging. That's yeah. where he started that company, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's over like in LA, and he's trying to make like this super long subway tunnel. Yeah, I heard that it didn't work. It kept uh, collapsing, I think. Uh, no, it, it just it just kept getting gridlock. It's there's too many people. Mm. There's too many people. So even with this fucking tunnel that's supposed to help the flow of traffic, it's still like <laughs> it's still fucking slow. All these people going to LA. I'm gonna make it. <clears throat> I'm gonna be the next Jerry Springer. What uh, Jerry Springer? What? <laughs> there's no Jerry Springer anymore. Who's going to take up the mantle? Uh, I mean, I guess that's true. I've yeah. been seeing there's been more and more judge, judges, uh, judge based shows. Dude, I love that one lady on TikTok, the black lady that's uh, that does like the the child support court. Mm, Have you not seen her? No, bro, dude. It's it's um, it's usually uh, they post up the ones of the guys like being wronged by the by the mother of the kids. Like he's mm-hmm. up there, like, ma'am, I'm working like three jobs trying to pay for the insurance and everything. And she's just going out partying and being with her friends. And, you know, she just dumps the kids off. I love my – the guys are always like, I love my kids, and I love it when they're over Wait, here. Wait, is that the one where, but, the, uh, where where he's just like, oh, like, I my son has, like, autism, and the girl's just like, I just want to go out and party. That's one of them, yeah. Yeah, she's kind of like – And then he's and like, d- I'll stop you right there. So you're going to pay him the child support. And she just goes off on her. She's like, but I'm not going to have any money for partying. He's like – uh, I don't care. <laughs> it's insane to think that people like that actually exist, dude. Bro, it's fucking crazy. It's it is crazy. Like it. A thousand dollars for a box of sixty Magic the Gathering cards, not legal for tournament play. Wait, let me see them. It just serves a box. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those are like okay. So those were like um, collector edition cards. Where basically what they did is they they made like different all like. So back in the day, they would have like these tur- tournaments where mm-hmm. whatever top deck won those tournaments, they would re-release them, like as like like collector packs. Oh. And oh. but the thing oh. is, the reason why they're not tur- tournament legal is because of the corners. They were cut with straight corners as opposed to rounded corners. Um, to identify them as not being tournament illegal, because essentially what they were is they were. Like mock ups. Oh. They were mock up cards. Okay. Because, like, for them to sell the actual cards that were used in a tournament into a thing you could buy, they would lose a lot of money. Okay. Because it's like, oh, the guy, the guy who pl- used that deck in that tournament paid like a grand for that deck and improved value. And now we're selling the same deck as a collector's edition that is not legal for like 50 bucks. Mm. So it's kind of like, Ooh, you own a fucking fancy deck that you can't legally use at a tournament, but you can use it with like amongst your friends. Yeah, and you can show like I have this deck. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, until that one kid's like, oh, uh, as you can see, the the corners are are not uh, rounded, so there's not tournament legal. <laughs> <laughs> um, you play. You you said you tried pickleball, right? Yeah, I played it a little bit. Did you buy rackets? Uh no we um we got rackets from okay. my um do you know brother. how much they are how much they were yeah I think most of the rackets range between anywhere from like thirty to like sixty damn really yeah it's because some of them like it's the same way how like you can buy some that are store brand and you can yeah. buy ones that are made by Franklin or <laughs> and there's actual pickleball tournament grade pickleball paddles. Oh my God, some dude. of them fucking white people, dude. dude. Some of them go up to like a hundred dollars a paddle. Well, this these go up to seven hundred dollars. Oh my God! It's Tiffany and Co. ping pong paddles. They're leather backed, and they have little gold trim on them. Seven hundred bucks. Who the fuck loves ping pong that much? Yeah. Oh, uh, three thousand dollars for a Louis Vuitton Jenga set. It's a Jenga set. 
It's like clear acrylic plastic, but it's Louis Vuitton. Yeah. <laughs> I see you slowly just being like, people need to die. <laughs> oh, here you go. Oh, I think you'll love these. How much do you think these balloon latex pants are? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Look at these things. Look at those ankles, dude. I'm going to have to put that in the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at that thick thigh save lives, huh? Isn't it the the shit that fucking uh, Sam Smith were, wore at that one fucking like um, event? Probably that's why. You're talking about yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. had like the inflated garbage bag and pants. he had like nipple pasties. Yeah, well, I think that it was on a music video that he did. Oh, okay. Um, how but much, he, how much do you think these pants are? I'm assuming they're ridiculously priced, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say they're probably like ten G's. No, a thousand. A thousand. Yeah, steel. Okay. <laughs> I was I was aiming way too high then. We should try to make some. Make some. Yeah, like out of some plastic bags or something. Make some designer pants. No, just some of these. Like try to mimic them. Oh, okay. And get sued. I know there's got to be like somebody out there that's already thought of like making like crotchless pants. Oh, these right here, uh, for almost nineteen hundred fucking dollars. This fucking Balenciaga brand, dude, fully destroyed sneakers. Like, they stole these off of a homeless guy in New York. And sold them. This is what the world is coming to. What I'm curious is... Do they stink? Are they actually Balenciaga brand? Or are those like an old pair of Vans they found in the trash? I mean, isn't all Balenciaga just shit they found in the trash? I mean, I would assume, I would assume either that or just shit that's like really predatory towards children. Oh, uh, St. Laurent roller skate stilettos. Wait, what? $3,500 for these roller skating stilettos. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's so many things on this site. Like, a, oh, this one, you can come on it. It's a Coach Leather Goofy plushie. It's made out of leather, so your jizz will just slide right off of it for all those plushies out there. <sighs> it's a, a leather plushie. Yeah, Jesus it's Christ. leather. It's uh, $600. <laughs> that actually looks really funny looking yeah. though. That would be kind of funny to own, but I'm not going to buy that ever. No, I'm not either. Why the fuck would you need a leather goofy? Oh, and the, the $1,300 Chanel boomerang, that better fucking come back after <laughs> I throw it. <laughs> it's designer. It's just... Whew. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out five grand. I kind of want to know if it does fly because it has that divot right uh -huh. there. So I wonder, because it's supposed to be just that. Have you ever thrown a boomerang? And yeah, had dude, it's had fucking it? hard. I've never gotten in to come back. It, I've it, never... It, you have to like, like flick it because if you do it like this, it's just gonna go into the ground. Yeah. But if you do it too much, it's just gonna go in a circle and fucking like nail you or something. I saw a video of a guy who had like these kind of like rubber ones, mm -hmm. and uh, he was like whipping them in like uh in like the, in uh in the parking lot of a gas station, and he was just like throwing it, and it was going like really close to the gas station, and then coming back, and he'd catch it every time. Like he had, I guess, really good technique. Oh, was it that like that three prong one? Um, because there's those two. It was like three pronged. Uh, like I think ones. he did both. I think he had three prong one. Because I think he was like a, I guess, like a boomerang and like um kind of guy. Yeah, I, a boomerang I, investors. I I don't think like I don't understand how they hunted with those back in the day, dude. He must have been one skilled as yeah, well. Those Aboriginal people, you see them; they're all like just stringy, muscular fuckers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're just like you see the videos of them. You, uh, that one show, uh, Wild Boys. Yeah, they go and hang out with a bunch of Aborigines, and they're over there like you see one guy just and it's, you're and it comes back and he just catches it. Yeah, Do nothing. <laughs> I'll break this mic. Oh yeah, that's good sound right there. Oh, God. <laughs> but no. Um, you want a baguette that's a purse? Uh, wait, a, a baguette? A, a baguette. A baguette. A full-size that... baguette. That's $1,200 <laughs> right there, but <laughs> there's not even a strap for it. Okay, okay. Now, I'm kind of curious. Oh, in the chair that's not a purse? I know we're talking about, like, really <laughs> dumb shit that people have uh, bought on, like, this website and shit that you found. Or you said it was a... <laughs> That's real alligator right there for that baseball cap. <laughs> oh, my God. That looks fucking gross. Imagine the sweat that you would build up uh, wearing that fucking hat. You can get a DHL shirt for $660. Well, uh, I yeah. remember that reminds me of, like, um, at my old job. <laughs> it used to be um, 
used to be this older guy that used to come in always wearing like different hats. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, uh, you work with a bunch of different Southern people down here and, um, here in Georgia. And you have a lot of people like, sh- like that have, who like to wear like Western wear and shit. But this guy like would always wear like this crocodile Dundee hat and it was like fully leather. And I don't know why, but he was also this older dude who like, um, I want to say he was in his like, he was in his mid to late sixties. This guy, this guy was already like fucking old. Like he looked old and he was one of those guys that always had a story about something. Mm hmm. Like, he claimed that he's done, like, every job you could think of. Name a job. He's done it. He's been a plumber, electrician, construction. A, he, he apparently uh, fucking did surgery. Or, or, or uh, he's, like, was a flight instructor. He's right, also, is this the guy that's always, you told us about him. Yeah, uh, he was yeah, just, yeah, he's just always making shit up. Because mm-hmm. uh, he said, like, one time he was driving big rigs while also working at the hospital. Like, what? what? Like, how? Ooh. <laughs> It's stupid. <laughs> I just got off a 15 hour drive. Time to go do knee surgery. It's like, fuck, shut up. I mean, what kind of surgery was it that you did? Did you uh, say? No. Okay. Just... Watching me, like, it was open heart surgery. Uh, but I was also doing brain surgery at the same time. And it was with a robot. But the camera wasn't working. I had to go by memory. <laughs> um, no, no. The whole reason I wanted to talk about like rich people buying stupid shit is because last week I brought up, I sent you the link to the, mm-hmm. uh, that fucking cruise, uh, Azamara cruises. They have a world tour that they do. It's 155 nights on a fucking cruise ship and you're going out 36 different countries, oh. 13 exclusive events, uh, and 55 late night and overnights. So that's uh, out of 155 nights, 55 of those are spent off the boat. The rest of the time, you're on the fucking boat, living in it. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, so you go all over. You go, like, to Central America, uh, fucking the French Polynesia, New Zealand, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Dubai. Uh, and then you go to uh, to uh, Turkey, Italy, uh, Spain, and Barcelona. Mm-hmm. And you can do all of this if you do the cheapest fucking one at a club interior room. And I sent you the fucking little pamphlet. Yeah. Uh, did you see the, how the room looked? No, no, no. It no. was a box smaller than this room. Oh, God. Like, you can, if, if me and you, if we laid on the bed, if we did, like, spread arms, mm. we can touch the walls. Oh, damn. 155 days in that. No windows. Ugh. $38,000 or $39,000 per person. And that doesn't include drinks or food. The what? That doesn't include anything else. Uh, so they have options where you can get all of it, like included. Yeah. But and then the most expensive one, it's a state room. It's a club owner's suite. It's two of these rooms, and you get some sofas, uh, and you get a window. Hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. And I lied. There are inclusions. There is, as I think it said, $22,000 worth of inclusion. So I think that covers basic food and water. Mm-hmm. But we were looking at the pamphlet of it um, the other day. <laughs> and Hannah and I were just like, what the fuck is this? If you don't pay for anything over a uh, suite, you can't do laundry. Wait, what? Yeah. You have to pay to do your laundry. And if you pay for one above the suites. Then they do your laundry once a week. And if you get like the top room, then you can do your laundry whenever you want. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, so what the fuck am I supposed to do if I just get a shitty ass little room? Like just smell? Yeah. I would have been like, You're no. You're just brewing in your own juices? Bro, no, I would do that. I would get the cheapest room, live out of that shit, and uh, just keep asking the help for like, hey, can I get like a couple bars of soap? Why? No reason. I'm just going to wash my clothes in the fucking sink. <laughs> But I, I, have, I have to think about, like, okay, so if you were able to save up money to get, like, the best of the best mm-hmm. of this cruise and be able to go off on this fucking long-ass journey. Yeah, dude, that's almost paying off 
a small house. Yeah, it's a hun- it would be like 156 days. Even if you could like fucking scrounge up that money, by the time you get back, you're, you've just been gone for like a third of the year. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you just abandon your job. Yeah. Then you get back and you're like, well, I have no money. Like, who is, nowhere to who, live. Who is this for? This also makes me think of like that. Have you seen that one couple who um, they did like the math? Because they got to the they got to their retirement age and like their oh, yeah. their parents their their family wanted to put them into a retirement home but they're just like fuck that they booked ten years of carnival cruises hell's yeah dude that's <laughs> the way I want to go I can go dude so, every day is a fucking party yeah <laughs> you're just at a sandals resort all the time no dude I would um I would just are sandal the... resor- resorts bad I don't know I kind of want to go to one I kind of do too yeah we should go to one let's go to Jamaica. Dude, let's do it. Oh, that sounds awesome. Let's do it, and we'll do the podcast there on the beach. <laughs> Live in Jamaica. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. We'll get a Jamaican guy on the show to, to yeah. interview. Wait, are you in, uh, are you in Hell's still going to Japan? Hell yeah, dude. We oh, bought yeah. the tickets. Oh, you, you got, you yeah, got, we bought them like last month. Do you guys got everything booked already? No, we're going to look this this month at a, a places to stay. Uh, we're going to look at a place to stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing an Airbnb because the most expensive one we can find, or like not expensive, like the cheapest ones are like thirty fucking dollars, and the good ones are like fifty bucks a night. Mm-hmm. So we're like, we're getting the good ones for fifty bucks a night. Yeah, uh, great. Um, because the good ones also have an actual like human size bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, from my understanding, it's like Japan's one of the more affordable places to go visit. Yeah, dude. It's just the plane ticket that's a nightmare. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a fifteen hour. Or is yeah. it longer? Ours is uh, there. It's going to be 18 hours. 18 hours? But we have a three-hour layover in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 15 hours, and then we wait. No. I think it's like 14, 15 hours. We get to Tokyo. I've never been on a plane, so I don't know what layovers are. Uh, it's when you uh, land in an airport, and you have to wait for your plane to arrive. Oh, you have to wait for another plane to take you to the... Yeah. Re- oh, okay. So sometimes, like, it sucks sometimes because you'll get there and it's like, oh, your layover is 30 minutes and your your terminal's on the other side of the airport. You better get fucking running. Um, so that's the home alone running thing. Yeah. You know, you're running to your terminal. Um, oh, dude, that, I just saw that video on TikTok. Uh, Macaulay Culkin finally got a, uh, a star on the Hollywood strip. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And Catherine O'Hara, his mom from Home Alone, was there. Oh, no. And the comments were like, she didn't forget him this time. <laughs> <laughs> but dude was crying. He was like, because he went through, like, you know, drug you know, addiction and all that shit. Yeah, he's, like, married to, like, Brenda Song now. Yeah. And, like, she apparently, everyone was like, she fucking saved his life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, he was up there, like, being Who would have thought Asian cooch was the secret? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why the massage is so good, dude. Huh? Mm. They put it over your head. Say a spell. Macaulay Culkin shouldn't have not been running in that lobby, dog. <laughs> what? It's a reference to Sweet Life of Jack and uh, Zach and Cody. Zach and Cody. I was about to say Jack and Cody. Jack and Cody. <laughs> the place Jack. No, but yeah. Um, Sweet Life of Jack and Cody. <laughs> that's the uh, Disney Plus season. Um, no, but like uh, I like how he ended his speech, though. He was like, uh, since we're close to the holidays, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Oh. <laughs> and yeah, everyone started like clapping and laughing. Yeah. yeah, they started booing him after that because he was just like, and by filthy animals, I mean all the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> For all the Palestine, no, <laughs> no. Pa- um, <laughs> you got on the mic. Palestine had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Drops it. God, dude, that'd be fucked. But no. Macaulay Culkin is just a raging racist. I mean, at one point, everyone was like, "This guy's off the fucking wall." I mean, he, he had that long, scraggly hair when he was all, like, on the shit and everything. Yeah, he did go through, go through some, like, dr- really bad drug stuff. Um, well, did, his parents, like, took all of his money, too, didn't they? When I he think was a child. so. I always think about, like, do you remember that movie? Um, Ricky Rick? Uh, no. Uh, do you remember the movie Heavyweights? Oh, fucking love remember that Remember the movie, fat dude. Hispanic kid that was also on the, the Mighty Ducks movie? Yeah. Yeah, apparently his life was fucking god awful after yeah. the fact. He got like super addicted to like heroin or something like that. Mm-hmm. Did you see the mugshot of him? No, bro. He looks like it looks like someone took him, deflated him, and took a picture. Dude, for years I always wondered what happened to that kid because I was just like, like that was the first time like we had a little bit of Latino representation. Yeah, that was Goldberg. Yeah, like, we were all like, dude, fucking 
finally. Like yeah. a kid that looks like us on a fucking movie. And he's and, fat. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, for years we didn't get any kind of like Latino representation. Like people were like, oh no, we got Antonio Banderas. And it's like, fuck him and those Spaniard fucks with their fucking conquistador ass statues stepping on my ancestors. We had fuck Cheech. you. Oh, yeah, we had Cheech. Yeah. Yeah, but Cheech only was really in like the fucking Up in Smoke movies. And then no, he, he did that movie, uh, Born in East LA. Have you not seen that one? Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, actually, and that actually, one was actually like it had a lot of good messages in it for being such an older movie. Yeah, but it's super unheard of. Yeah, because like it was, you know, it's it was a, a Hispanic movie. It was. A, it's actually a really funny movie too. Yeah, it is. It was super. It was. It had like the classic like Cheech and Chong, like, like humor, like drug humor that didn't make sense. You know, yeah. I think he like one point he's like walking through like a marijuana factory thing, and he's just kind of like not even. Oh, that's it. not East LA. That's a. That's uh, Cheech and Chong. Uh, I think that one's Nice Dreams. Nice Dreams? Yeah, because they get uh, they go through the marijuana factory and they pick up the van that's made out of marijuana. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they play the concert at the end of the show. You're right, you're yeah. right, you're right. But yeah, no, he's born in East L.A. is when he, he's I mean, like, If I can be perfectly honest, I think Up and Smoke is the only good one. The other ones are kind of bad. I like uh, Nice Dreams, Up and Smoke. There's a... Uh, I think there's one called like next movie. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. ne- next movie. I remember that one. That one was that's when they go to Amsterdam. I think is it. Yeah. What's the one? There's one where the whole movie Cheech is like stuck at home waiting for a date, and then uh, Chong's character meets Cheech's like cousin cousin Red, Red yeah. and that keeps saying holy sheep holy shit. Holy sheep shit. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm like, I found that character so unfunny. <laughs> That I just that was the point. <sighs> that was the point. Yeah, that was the point of the character. He was supposed to be like super annoying and not funny. <sighs> yeah, I hated it. <laughs> like it, it ruined the movie for me. No, that that was a uh, that's next movie. I think. I think it's next yeah. next movie. Yeah, because like, yeah, it and is- she's just at home just waiting for that chick. He cleans that house and everything, but it still looks like shit. Yeah. And then Chong has the fucking motorcycle in the in the living room. Yeah. And all he does is rev it into that guy's fucking bushes. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in that movie is just him like Cheech waiting for this girl to finally show up and he's just kinda like staring out the window or whatever. And then he's like looking at his watch and he just signs and he's like oh, fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 or the what is it just the songs that they do is like oh i wrote another song and he does the mexican american song yeah and then it's fucking chong oh i got one to you yeah it's really speaks from the heart beaners yeah <laughs> talking about them beaners <laughs> 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 they'll kick you in the face dun, 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 dun. <laughs> it's just a fucking like blues walk <laughs> that's all it is oh god i need to watch that movie again i haven't seen it forever and then they get abducted by aliens in the end yeah, I just remember that <laughs> that where Chong, yeah, Chong, like Chong comes back from getting ad- abducted from aliens, and, and he, <laughs> it gives Cheech alien cocaine, yeah, and he like rips a hole through his wall, yeah. like, it's so and then he takes off and he's flying like that, <laughs> <laughs> and they fly into the blunt. That's an alien spaceship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Good Those time. are good rich people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they're still rich. I, I think they get enough like residuals off their stuff that's well known. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think they're like filthy rich. I think they live comfortably. Yeah, I did yeah. see one people. Uh, some people say where like at the time they were considered like very. They were considered very odd. Mm-hmm. Um, for one, their comedy style, but also people people uh, back then would always comment on how weird they dressed. But if you look mm-hmm. back, they were ahead of their time. Yeah. They were dressed very fresh for their like time. Like they just knew well, like what was way, gonna be, uh, look good. The way uh Cheech dresses uh-huh. is how fucking hipsters dress now. Yeah. Yeah, like the the yellow little like uh uh tank underneath mm-hmm. and then the red suspenders with the high like ankle uh like the rolled up fucking uh, brown yeah. pants and the little beanie rolled up. That's like a that's Balenciaga right there, bud. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that some fashion trends finally died. You know, I got really fucking tired of seeing back when, like, when we were in like high school and stuff. I used to hate seeing like kids who used to go with the like skin tight jeans with the very deep V neck. Oh yeah. 
I was like, okay, I stupid. I could tolerate the jeans if the if the rest of the ensemble looked fine, but the V neck killed me. Yeah, and the only reason. What do you think you're an attack attack? (laughs) Seriously, go crab core. Uh, This is a that's just a western dog, a cowboy western. (laughs) What uh, what is it? No, uh, one last thing about uh the Cheech and Chong stuff and Nice Dreams Mm. when they're uh, getting arrested. Uh, I forget what they get arrested for. Oh, for just driving high, I think. Or no, yeah. or something. Um, oh, no, their house, they get fucking raided by the police. Yeah. And they, he's trying to pretend he's swimming on top of the tarp and everything. But uh, when they're getting arrested, uh, and he's like, all right, they're like, all right, deport them. Back to Mexico for them. And Chandra's like, I'm not even Mexican, man. What the fuck? Because <laughs> he's not. Yeah. He's a white guy. But <laughs> and they just send him to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ugh. now going back, okay, let's get back on track a little bit with the, with, rich the whole, r- with the rich folk, right? Should we be concerned that, um, Bill Gates is buying up all the land? I mean, it doesn't matter because all the, the fucking, uh, the Arabs own all the fucking groundwater. Wait, what? Yeah, dude. That's what Arizona right now, they're having a huge fight because, there's companies in uh in like Saudi Arabia own the groundwater in Arizona and they're pumping it to ship to use over in like in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yeah. <dude. laughs> what? When I heard about it, I was like, what the fuck? But yeah. Meanwhile, everyone else is just mad at Mr. Beast for making wells. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know. Nobody's <laughs> talking about the Arab water. Yeah. And it's because all the money that they pump into our government, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. And I know you don't want to get political, but shit, dude. <laughs> they're, drain- they're drying out well, the I was just dry area. I was just kind of curious on the whole idea of, like, so we know that systematically the top 1% owns all the wealth. Yeah. And... Because of that, they're basically are crippling the working and middle class to the point where like we're like here's the best here's the best example that I could think of. This past year, I am now earning the most money I ever have in my life. And I am paying the most amount of taxes to where I'm barely I'm I haven't really gone gotten ahead. If anything, I'm still where I was a couple Mm -hmm. of years ago. I'm still earning the same that I was earning a couple of years ago. I'm just getting taxed heavier now Mm -hmm. with more money. And 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 the prices of everything are still going up. And the prices of everything else are are going up. So it's kind of like, how do you, as one, get ahead? And even those who are able to break into making like 100K a year, if possible, they're still getting taxed a fucking hell. Mm -hmm. But once you hit that millionaire mark, they don't tax you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The fucking uh, uh, here in Georgia? Did you hear that shit about uh, Kemp? No. So uh, he's taken away the little tax break that we were all getting here in Georgia. Uh, I guess because he doesn't like something's going on, or he's just wanting to fuck everyone. Um, all gas is going up like thirty cents mm-hmm. because they're adding the taxes back to it. Yeah. So gas is just going to get expensive again here. Right around the holidays, bud. Yep. Yeah. This this, this is going to be like one of the shittiest holidays for me because it's kind of like I'm in the more like worst financial situation I've been, but not really, if that makes any sense. Like, it's like I. You're breaking even. I'm breaking even. Yeah. But it's but it's also like. That's all I can really afford to do because (laughs) I could be reckless with my money and enjoy myself, but I know that Mm -hmm. it's not going to look good if i do yeah so it's better for me just to like take my losses and move from there and it it fucking sucks though it really does Mm -hmm. because it's like you know you put a lot of time and effort and you work hard and you think you're gonna get ahead and then you just end up in the same situation you were a couple of years ago Mm -hmm. just different because it's like i'm not i i'm fortunate to be in my in the position that i am where i'm earning really great money more so than a lot of people that I know, and yet I feel like we're all in the same boat. We're all well, yeah, dude. fucking struggling. Yeah, it's insane. Again, it's like it's the 
I think they said uh, prices like the 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 difference between like what Americans make to the prices everything is and going up the percentages. It's Great Depression era. Yeah, yeah. That like that is the the fucking the the I can't think of the fucking word, but that's what it's like. That makes me think of the fucking thing that uh be- start people- selling kids, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, <laughs> send them off to Epstein's Island. Um, <laughs> There's no one there. <laughs> that's what they want you to think. Epstein's, Look it up. Epstein's alive. Huh? No, he's fucking dead. He's got no. They got his brain in a jar. <laughs> As he's walking around like that fucking robot from Billy and Mandy. Oh, God. Uh, what's his face? Oh, I fucking love that. It was uh, Chili Con Carne. That was the show. The, uh, yeah. Uh, Chili Con called? Carne. Oh, okay. Chile Con Carne. Yeah. 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 Such a dumb name for a show, but it was great. Yeah. Anyways, um, what I, what I was going to fucking say. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it makes, me think, it makes me think how like people on TikTok were making fun of like that recent like summit thing that they were doing where the CEO of Walmart got up on stage at this like, giant conference thing. And he's just like, we need to be careful on these upcoming months because we're going to be looking at a giant deflation uh, point. The CEO of Walmart is telling all people who are investors and people who are like, you know, big money tycoons yeah. that we're going to need to buckle down because we're seeing a great deflation as in prices for things are going to get more affordable for people. And that's bad for us, mm-hmm. which is such a weird fucking thing to like be ranting about. Yeah, and I know recently on, um, uh, I watched this whole thing that John Oliver had did where he was talking about, um, dollar stores. He was talking. He was talking about like the two main dollar stores in America are Dollar General and Dollar Tree. Dollar yeah. Tree also owning Family Dollar, and they are a multi-billion-dollar business. And the way how they make so much money is because technically they're ripping people off. Yeah. Because what they're doing is they're selling you things more affordably, but they're in smaller quantities. So essentially. If like one of the examples they used was Irish spring soap, like it's like the cheapest like bar of soap yeah. that you can buy. You can buy a bar of soap for a dollar at Dollar General. That mm-hmm. seems like a pretty good deal. But then you find out you can buy six bars for um, for six dollars at Walmart. But the difference is the bars of soap that you get at Walmart are slightly bigger mm-hmm. and the ones at Dollar General are slightly smaller. So you're spending technically more for less yeah. at Dollar General. I mean, you, that's why you see Dollar Generals and Dollar Trees around poor areas. Yeah. Yeah. Or and, like or rural areas like here. They're fucking everywhere. And then one of the things that he highlighted was the fact that like they know what they're doing. They know that they're being predatory to lower, lower mm-hmm. income areas. And also the CEO or I guess like the head of like business or who are the fuck because you know they always have like some weird fucking yeah. like like corporate title. Well, he was on record on on an interview saying when the economy uh is good, we do good. When the economy is bad, we do great. Mm. We do amazing. Because they know people are going to turn to go to the place where things are the most affordable. And that's when they really get the fucking money spinning. Yeah. Also, is it a thing to where every dollar general and dollar tree or dollar store? Yeah. They have to be like never stocked (laughs) or in the process of being stocked. I don't like every single time I've gone to one, they always have the totes out where they're like pulling all the stuff from the truck. Yeah. That's something that I think they and do. They have like one of the highest turnover rates. Yeah. Cause people, it's like, you're always stocking. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, dude. No, it's the fact that they can't keep people to the, the work at these places. So a lot of times these dollar generals are being run by one, no more than two people at a time. Yeah. And when you go to them, you notice, that, oh yeah, there's only one or two people here at a time yeah. at most. That's why they get robbed so much. And it's, it's not just that, but it's also the fact that like they are paying them like close to minimum wage. Yeah. I think a dollar general or dollar tree employee or only makes a like, dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? God, dude, fuck. You really need a fucking job. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, if, you they, want, if you're taking a fucking dollar. No, I think they make somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10 to $12 an hour, yeah. which is fucking like. Nothing now. That's, that's worse than McDonald's. Like, unfortunately, like, 
I know there's people out there that probably make that much. Yeah. But, like, unfortunately, that is, like, nothing now. Yeah. And it sucks. Because I remember when I was in uh, when I was in high school. It wasn't that long ago, dude. I was uh, working at the uh, that one restaurant. Well, we town. both have been out of school for, like, what, 10 years now? No. When, did you, when was your graduating class? 2009. 2009? So that's 10 plus 4. Yeah, 14 years. Dude. It's been 14 years. Okay. Yeah, Mine was 2003, yeah. Mine was 2011. So for me, it's been 12 years. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, like even then, like 12 years. Or it was like 15, 16 years ago. Because yeah. I worked at the restaurant like when I was like 16, 17. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was making, what was it? Nine bucks an hour. And first, I was, that was good fucking money, dude. That was, that was your first job. No, that wasn't my first job. Oh, was it? First job was McDonald's when I was 15. Oh, okay. And, bro, that shit fucking sucked. I was making, like, $7. And I quit. Like, after, like, three months there, I was like, hey, this is my last day. We have to give her two weeks notice. Yeah, I'm not doing that. This is my last day. I'm working this shift, and I'm done. Yeah, I remember. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I gave so much free food that day, dude. I always think about this, man. I remember we used to have this conversation all the time with, like, with, with, with like, a, with like friends. Would we meet up and yeah. shit, right? It was like, dude, remember when we graduated and we would, like, salivate at the idea of getting paid $15 an hour? Yeah. Like, we were, like, oh, when we were graduating, we are like, dude, if we could make $15 an hour, we'd fucking get so ahead. Mm-hmm. Like, we could fucking, like, get a house and all this shit. And, and now it's, like. about a rocket ship? <laughs> yeah. Now some of us are already, like, like making. Like some like in the neighborhood in the twenties, and we're, yeah. we're so fu- we're still behind. Yeah, it's so fucking annoying. Well, it's because like we didn't like when we were like young, we didn't think about everything else, mm-hmm. bills and car payments, home payments, fucking uh, your tire fucking blowing out on you, so you had to buy a new one or get a spare or fucking gas. I love, or, I love that one yeah. meme of uh, of um. Of it's like a, it's like a person crying. They're like you being upset that you didn't buy a house in two thousand and eight instead of being in middle school. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, God. Or I like the other one. It's uh, it's just, um, what is it? It's just, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, from uh, Friday, the big guy. Uh, Debo? Yeah, Debo. It's just Debo. And it's like, hey, I just got paid. No, nah, I just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> and it, on his shirt, it's just taxes. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I mean, what's the, what's the, um, what's the uh, amount that you get? Tax per paycheck. It's, like it's what, uh point? depends on where we're at. Like here for us, uh point eight two works it to like give or take a dollar or two. Okay. Yeah. So point eighty two I thought in total it was like twenty one percent. No. It's not uh, no, well the the easy way to do it is I you take, it, to to make it easy, take your yearly earnings, uh to take uh how much you like when you sign on to a job is like, oh, if you make salary, this is how much you make in a year. Mm-hmm. You take that divided by 52, because there's 52 weeks in the year. Yeah. Is it 52? Yeah, 52. And then you take that number and you divide it by 40, because 40 hour work week, that's the standard. That's what they pay you if you're salary. You mm-hmm. only get paid for 40 hours a week. You don't get any overtime, um, which sucks. Um, and then that is your hourly. But if you want to see how much you make a paycheck, uh, you take whatever you did for that fifty-two, or you your your yearly divided by fifty-two, you multiply that by point eighty-two, so it takes away that percentage for your taxes, and then what you end up with is what your weekly, like check is. Yeah, I get annoyed with taxes so yeah. much not because uh, obviously I get it we're supposed to pay taxes and all that shit. The but fuck we are, dude. I know tax taxation is theft, but yeah, but. Here's the thing. If you work a job, you haven't said that in a while, and you get, yeah, I know. Yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been cleaning up the language a little bit. I've noticed something that I heard something really good in a podcast recently. Mm. You know the comedian Ralph Barbosa? No, he's a he's a new up and coming like um, uh, Mexican uh, comedian, yeah. and uh, he's got a really relaxed way of like telling jokes, you know. But he's super funny. And then people had asked him, it's like, why do you like sound so relaxed and when you talk and sh- and shit like that, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, I have to do that intentionally because I've noticed a lot of Hispanic people, uh, a lot of Hispanic people, because you grew up learning like English and Spanish, people tend to mumble the words. So a mm-hmm. lot of times it's better for you just to talk slower. The slower you talk, the better you'll have 
the less of an issue you have enunciating. And um, I've noticed also when I slow down my talking, it helps me think out what I'm saying a lot better, easier. Yeah. So that way I can stop myself from doing the hums and saying like too many times yeah. and different things like that. Okay. And it, it, I, I've been trying to do different techniques to improve my speech because I think it's important for us to do that, especially in podcasting. Because if people nah. are gonna if people are gonna listen to us for like an hour and a half at uh, per episode, it'd probably be good for us to like not talk like we're in the third grade. I don't speak good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's to me, it's um, I don't know. It's just uh, like I've noticed actually because I've just been reading the same things over and over again at work. Mm-hmm. And when I get home, I just don't want to read anymore. When I do read something, I'm struggling right now with some words because mm. they're not words that I usually use. So I'm like, what the fuck is, oh, it's this word. Okay, okay. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and I'll be reading in my head and I'll be stumbling over my fucking words. <laughs> what is a salad? <laughs> salad. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a salad is. <laughs> oh, I lost two more pounds. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. I have, uh, yeah. I've noticed that like, I haven't been getting fatter. I've just been the same size, which mm-hmm. is good. It's good. I'm not getting bigger, but I'm just continuing to be the same amount of fat, <laughs> which I guess is, I don't know. Like on camera, I kind of look like I'm slimming a little bit, but honestly, when I get up and you see this fucking Ugh, gut. This angle makes me look just fucking wide. Huh? Like nah, I, man. Like, not, it's just this right here. No, no, no. You can't. Tired. Look at that thing. You, you can't give yourself that. No, you, you're, you're. Uh, you're like Thor from God of War. You're very warrior. <laughs> you're very you're very warrior esque. No, <laughs> I'm fat. Yeah, I wish I could grow a beard like that. Like what, a fucking, this? like no, no, like a like a like, like a, a full beard, like yeah. a Thor. I was gonna say, don't be jealous of this, dude. I, I wish I could, this. I wish I could get like a Ben Kissel beard. Oh, uh, yeah. without the rape. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All the alcoholism, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't rape anybody. I take that back. I love you guys. I love Ben. Get better, Ben, please. Yeah. I want to see you come back. Apparently, like that chick has been like uh, posting up again. Yeah, but she's being really fucking weird. Really? Yeah, like she's posting like just weird, weird shit. And then she uh, did another post where she like. Henry blocked me, but she called out like a bunch of people from last podcast to saying like it's time to talk about it and blah blah blah. Uh, like, this happened recently. Yeah, like a week or two ago. Really? Which I'm kind of like, just say what happened. I got so upset whenever the side stories theme changed with Marcus being like side stories. Like they they, they oh yeah they that's took right. out. But yeah. here's the thing: they still have Ben Kissel pop up in the ads because mm-hmm. I hear him all the time, like talking about well, Texas Pete. <laughs> Well, I think it's because, uh, like, maybe when they do the ads, they're, like, contractually obliged to keep mm-hmm. it up. Like, maybe Ben signed a contract being like, oh, these ads will play. So Maybe. Because yeah, I know. Uh, I think I think deep down Ben is going to come back. Because the thing is, they've been running without him, but they still haven't changed their logo. Ben is still on the photo. Yeah. And he's still popping up in the ads. They've done a couple of changes because they know it's probably not going to be anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But I want to say, like, in a year time... Ben is going to come back looking healthier, better, hopefully mentally stronger than where he was. And then he'll have a chance to sit down and give his side of the story of like his alcoholism. And then hopefully all this can kind of like go back to normal. Cause I do feel like, yes, what he did was pretty fucked up if true, but it's only coming from one person. And we don't know how truthful she's being. I want to say that she is probably telling the truth, but maybe she did exaggerate some bits. I mean, I mean, it's a known thing that he was an alcoholic and everything. And yeah, apparently, like from what I saw, they did try to get him help. Mm-hmm. But he just wouldn't. So like, it's not like they didn't try. I think now it's like more like he doesn't have a choice. He has to. Yeah, do he better. had to do it because of like you know of the allegations and everything. I mean, one you one it would benefit you in yeah. your life to get healthier. And also you never want to go down a route where you end up looking like, like, I guess with the big, best example would be like, you, nobody wants to be current day Bam Margera. Oh yeah. Like you're so fucking out of it. Isn't he getting better now though? I don't know. Cause I, he was posting up and people were like, you're looking a lot healthier now. And, and he's out there skating again, and he's being very coherent. He apologized because apparently he went to uh, fucking Priscilla Presley's house for some reason, like Elvis Presley's uh, wife. I think that is daughter. Her daughter, yeah. And like, 
she like said a whole thing being like Bam was very belligerent and just kept talking about like things that he's doing was very rude and all this other shit. Mm-hmm. And apparently he took something from the house that was Elvis's and gave it to his dad because his dad's a big Elvis fan. Oh, wow. Um, and then Bam at first was like, no, she's fucking lying and all this other shit. Uh, but then he released the whole thing as being like, hey, I'm sorry to Priscilla Presley. I was a complete fucking dickhead. Uh, please forgive me. I know it's not easy, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I would love to work with you and 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 to mend this relationship and a bunch of other shit. And I was like, okay, it sounds like he's actually kind of you know what working I working on the way. Honestly, if I was in that situation, like, let's say you were in Ben and Margera's situation, where like you had all the money in the world, and you got to a point to where your alcoholism and drug use has gotten so out of hand that you've become like like a giant liability for the people around you, the people that you love. I would make, I would make it so to where legally I would have that stripped from me and I would be sent off to like a fucking Institute to get myself better for me to even like regain like yeah. any of like my, cause I feel like the best way to fix bam is, is to get him away from everything that is enabling his behavior. You yeah. take away his wealth, take away his ability to have any form of freedom. Go take his ass to a fucking like David Goggins boot camp where they're gonna beat the fuck out of him to get his ass back in shape. Not literally beat yeah. the fuck out of him. But I mean, the thing there you're saying, take away his wealth. You can't do that. Uh, that's why you have to do it yourself. Like you have to yeah, like you do it yourself. He's not gonna fucking do. That. No, 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 yeah. no. No, what I'm saying is like, I would draw up legal contracts saying that, like, if this ever does happen to me, I want this to happen because I've already signed it, uh, like, in the past. Like, if I start fucking up, make it so that I can get back on track. But who's in control of that, then? Huh? I guess it would, like, fall in line to, like, I guess somebody who would have to give the give the go-ahead. So, I guess the person you would trust the most. I would probably give it to... Somebody I trust, like, who would want me to be in a better place. Not your wife. <laughs> huh? I, honestly, that probably would be the best choice. But I feel like I could never get into that kind of line of behavior because of my wife. If yeah. I didn't have my wife in my life, then yes, I could see that a hundred percent happening. Mm-hmm. Where I could, like, just become a fucking madman and just, like, give in to all the vices even though I don't have that many, I've never stumbled into extreme drug use or alcoholism. Well, I mean, we're just seeing it around and everything, just seeing what people become on this shit. You're like, I'm good. Yeah. Also, I already feel a little crazy being ADHD. I don't need me- I don't need like things altering me yeah. above that. I'm I've been hesitant to try some stuff that I want to try because like I kind of don't want to reshape my brain. I like how my brain is already. Yeah. Because I've heard there's a lot of benefits to like taking like um, like doing like therapy with like mushrooms and shit, and yeah. it does seem like an interesting thing to do. But I at the same time I'm kind of like I don't know if I want to alter my mind like that. I thought you were about to start talking about like ayahuasca and DMT and stuff. Like, no, all right, Joe no. Rogan. No, 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 no. I don't want it. No, fuck that. Like DMT. Like, do you really want to take th- take something that's gonna have people described as, hey, do you want to take something that's going to help you talk to God? No, I'm good. I mean, I try it. I, no, I'm too scared of that shit, dude. I, it's just the idea of leaving the realm is too much for me. It's like, I'll wait till like it's time to leave the realm. Nah. Or just I, do it to where like when you're going to die and shit, you'll be like, just give me the DMT right now. I am a core believer that there are other realms, and I do not want to go to another realm. I'm going to stick on this realm until it is my time to leave. Until I send you to the shadow realm. (laughs) (laughs) It's time to duel. (laughs) I'm just saying. Hey, Yugi, it's me, Joey. Oh, God. What if that is the next realm? You go into anime realm. Oh, God. But you don't pick what anime you go to. I hope I'm in a hentai. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. No, I wouldn't want to. Just too moist. (laughs) You end up in the porn, uh, the hentai realm, but you're the one stuck in the washing machine. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Not my pussy. Uh, Oh, God. I was playing Call of Duty today, and there's a guy called Wet Pussy. Yeah. I was like, you just got killed by Wet Pussy. I was like, God, Jesus Christ. But, yeah. Find me on uh, Call of Duty, everyone. Doc McStuffins.
That's who I am. Isn't that like a little kid character? Yeah, I'm Doc McStuffins <laughs> on there. <laughs> so you're just getting murdered by Doc McStuffins. It's funny. My my handle's always been the same for like the longest time. Yeah. It's it's the same as like my, my Instagram handle although, at, at uh what handful of Pedro. Yeah, although thinking about it now, naming myself after a cartoon character sounds pretty predatory. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's Doc McStuffins. Oh, yeah, it's Doc McStuffins. <laughs> I have a couple of different like um Different names that I've used throughout the years. I was online. Coney on uh, Steam. I used to use the the name Hamhawks a lot. Hamhawks. I used to use Hamhawks. Uh, I used uh, Peppy uh, uh, or Doctor Peppy, one of the two. And uh, I've also used um, Kitty Cheese and uh, Chody Kessel. Chody Kessel. Yeah, I've used. Uh, yeah, I, that was I, good. I use I I, I I change them every time. I don't like using the same thing, although I have used some of them multiple times. If it wouldn't let me, because some you know how like some games are like yeah. you can't use that because it's kind of like yeah. close, you know. Yeah, I just put some like underscores in my name so that way I can use it. Yeah, because there's already a Doc McStuffins out there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, like I remember, uh, for on Twitch, I had to start a Twitch channel to watch some some of the ones. It was like a couple of years back. It was weird. It was like, oh, you can't watch these unless you wa- uh, make a Twitch. And it was just watching someone like like build something. Hmm. Yeah. So I just made one. I'm beef and bean burrito. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, for anybody interested in us doing gaming videos, we might be doing that soon. So yeah. keep a look. I actually have updated the YouTube. We should be having, um, we'll have two new uploads this week. And then uh, the way I've been doing it, I will have a couple of... I'm going to try to at least get two new YouTube videos up every week for yeah. the upcoming month Bro, until we I get back on track. Thing. We're also going to uh, be very behind. If you're wondering why there's missing numbers, it's because we've lost a lot of footage yeah. and all this other shit. But, you know, let's go ahead and fucking get this yeah. wrapped up. This Nido thing is great. I've yeah. been playing with it a whole episode. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so de-stressed. Mm. Yeah. What if they made a dude make a chair out of this? <laughs> a chair? Like a whole like recliner chair. Or like that, a beanbag. Is that, it's gonna feel amazing or it's just gonna tear up your back. I think like when you if you lay on it, it's gonna like when it deflates, it's gonna yeah. like pull your back so it's gonna like pop your back. Maybe. Or maybe you just die because you can't get out of it. <laughs> but anyways, thanks again <laughs> for listening to another episode of the Knife Phone, guys. Make sure to give us a follow at the Knife Phone Podcast on Instagram, also on TikTok. You can find us on YouTube now at the Knife Phone Podcast. Uh, make sure to give us a like, a subscribe, go in the comments, give us some fucking feedback if you liked the episode, if you didn't like the episode, suggestions for future episodes, and all that other good shit. And as always, new episodes every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today. Yeah, we've been behind. We've been very. It's the holidays. Okay, fuck off. <laughs> and we're also we work. We're full time working, man. We're doing shit like that, you know. Yeah. So you know. Go kiss your mother with that mouth. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What yeah, I <laughs> oh, to those who care about our health, we're still trying. We're still fat, as you can see. Uh, Joe's fat just goes to his knees, and uh, what? We, we, yeah. what are you talking about? That's, that's muscle, baby. <laughs> that's just your kneecap, isn't it? No, I got muscle, man. Look at that. Look at that shit. <clears throat> I know, but if you if you if you retract it, it just looks like a. That's that's. The knee and the tendons and everything. That's a that's learn a, your anatomy. That's a chicken cutlet, dog. Hell's yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, we'll be here every fucking Friday, so be on the lookout for that. If not, we're on a Saturday or Sunday, whatever. Don't judge us. We're trying our best. Yeah. And we'll have some clips up and all that other shit, whatever. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll find us on Instagram. Yeah. Got Campbell, else? Pedro, also in the woods. Yeah, if you want to look up for our personals and shit. Um, <laughs> You're so antisocial. I just don't care. I, I want more attention. I, I want attention on the show. I don't want attention on us. It's nah, just fuck like, the show. Follow what? me. <laughs> follow Joe. No, follow uh, Mexican OT. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go to Joe's. Uh, go to Joe's uh, Instagram. We will see him do a piece of art every single day for a year. Um, I can try if I get enough followers. Yeah, yeah. He's going to draw different penises. Yeah. You should actually do something like that for the next year. We're Just about to start a new them. year. We got to start something. We got to do a new year's resolution. Obviously, losing weight semi worked. Or se- like, I didn't yeah, I'm lose. I'm still working on it. 
You got about, well, three weeks left in the year? Yeah. How much How much have you lost this year? Uh, I went from 350. I'm at 318, probably a little less now. I haven't weighed myself. Okay. Um, I could lose those 18 pounds. I bet I can get down to 300 by the end of the year. Okay. I believe you. Let's do it. <laughs> Is your body in the show now? Yeah, let's end it. All right, later, guys. Bye. <laughs>